Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you all. In this video, we are going to see how to measure the 3D vena contracta area or the 3D VCA from a color full volume using the QLab 9 software. Again, we have to stress on this point that if you are using any software other than the QLab or another version from the QLab, it will be the same concept. The 3D VCA was proven to be feasible in about 80% of patients and it was also proven to be very well correlated with the severity of MR driven from the gold standard methods. Why do we need to measure the 3D vena contracta area? Because the 2D vena contracta width is based on the assumption that the regurgitant orifice is more or less of a circle, which is not the case in many patients, especially those with functional mitral regurgitation. That can be right in a way if you are talking about patients with primary mitral regurgitation, the regurgitant orifice area usually uh, is taking a circular shape, but if you are speaking about the secondary mitral regurgitation, most of those patients have an ellipsoid or elliptical shape of the regurgitant orifice. And in that case, the 2D vena contract area is not valid at all. That's why the 3D vena contract area came with this rationale of seeing and tracing the vena contract area or the regurgitant orifice area with direct vision. And this avoids any geometrical assumptions for the orifice. That's why it was assumed to be accurate and it was proven to be more accurate than the 2D uh, vena contracta dimension. Finally, I hope all of you will find this video of value and as usual, I will be very happy to receive your comments and questions afterwards. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Peace be upon you all. Uh, as we said, we will see how to measure the vena contracta area in 3D, 3D VCA. Here we are starting with this color full volume that is showing the mitral valve in gray scale and the mitral regurgitation jet in blue and red. Here we can click the play button to uh, make it playing. And as we said before in our previous videos, we can make it play and stop by just clicking the, pace, uh, the space bar. So by clicking the, the space bar, it will run and then it will stop again. Uh, here the QLab is showing us the tools by which we can quantify or work on uh, this particular volume. In this video, we're going to show how to use this tool, which is 3D quantification, in order to measure the 3D vena contract area. We'll click this one. So by clicking this one, we will see uh, the MPR mode, multi-blender reformation mode. And as we said previously, we have four different boxes, the green box, which has a red line representing the red box. That's why if I move the red line here, the image in the red box will change. And also it has the blue line that if I change it, its position, the image in the blue frame will change downwards. So we have the green, red, blue, as well as the 3D box, which will show you all the blend that we are cutting with. And also here we have these buttons, green, red, blue, and 3D box. If we click the green one, the green frame only will enlarge. Click it back again, we will see the four uh, frames again, and vice versa. Okay, now uh, if you are assessing the mitral regurgitation, so we need a systolic frame because mitral regurgitation is a systolic event. So uh, we have first to put our lines in the middle of the mitral valve to show the orifice. So here I can see the mitral regurgitation jet. Starting by frame one usually, because this is an ECG guided acquisition. So an ECG gated acquisition, the first frame is usually diastolic or end diastolic. I have to move frame by frame from here to see what's happening. Now I can see a regurgitation jet. Frame three, the regurgitation became less. So I will choose this one as the one showing the maximum regurgitation jet. And from here, the variability can come. So if I measured in this frame, some other colleague will measure another frame. Here, the variability comes and uh, it is the same if you are measuring the 2D uh, vena contracta with the variability will remain the same. So uh, here I'm choosing the frame that will show me the maximum regurgitation jet. And then I will move by my lines to cut directly on the jets. So I can see the jets in multiple views. Then I'm requested to rotate 
this line from here, as we said previously, if you cut the line from the middle, it will be a hand. That means you will move it from side to side. But if you cut it from the periphery, it will be a hand plus a curved arrow. That means you can rotate the line. So now I'm rotating the line to see the maximum of the jet in both views. Okay. Also from here, I can magnify to see the maximum and uh, limit and lower uh, the error limit. Now, uh, this blue line I need to cut exactly at the same point that I'm cutting if I'm measuring the 2D vena contractor dimension. So I'm here, I will curve this line to look at the vena contractor or the neck of the flow. If you notice the here, I can see the orifice of the mitral valve in systole with a regurgitant orifice area. That's why if I moved the line upwards, now I'm cutting on the left atrium, and I can see the jet in the middle. I'm coming closer to the orifice. You can see the jet is getting narrower, and also the orifice is forming here like that. If you notice uh, that the regurgitant orifice area is not a circle, it's uh, more of elliptical or crescentic shape, right? And uh, that's why the 2D vena contractor area in such patients uh, who are having secondary mitral regurgitation are not so accurate because it is actually based on the assumption that the regurgitant orifice area is circular. And it is not the case in every patient, especially those patients with uh, secondary mitral regurgitation. So I'm coming now closer. If I move downwards to the LV, then I will lose everything. This is the visa itself. I'm cutting on the visa. Now it is, I'm cutting at the neck of uh, the jet. Okay, just proximal to the orifice. Also, from here, you can click the color and color suppress and see the orifice. If you are really cutting at the neck, this will reassure you that you are really cutting at uh, the narrowest orifice. If you are not, you can also modify your lines on the 2D and come closer to the orifice and then put the color back and then you will get a vena contractor like that. From here, you can enlarge this flow frame from clicking the flow box. Okay, and here we have uh, the regurgitant orifice. What is left is ju just tracing this by left click, left, left left, like that, the last one has to be a right click in order to measure the vena contractor area, uh, that one gives us 0 0.2 uh, centimeter square, I hope that was uh, of value and thank you so much.